Thanks for your company. Proposed increases in the rate of value-added tax have been frozen. Sources close to the government have indicated. Joy Business sources say Finance Minister Ken Oforiata's proposals to increase the VAT rate to meet revenue shortfalls were shot down by President Okufado at an emergency cabinet meeting. The president, the sources say, was concerned that any such increases would impose a heavy burden on the general citizenry. He therefore taxed Mr. Foriata to explore some other innovative revenue-generating measures to bridge the gaps. Speculations and their attendant anger, especially on social media, about an imminent 3.5% increase in the VAT rate from 17.5% to 21% were rife late last week and the beginning of the week. To help us understand what is happening is Philip Nanfuri with Joy Business Desk. Thanks for joining me, Philip. Hello, Venice. All Hello, right. Yeah. So we are hearing now that the president has tasked the finance minister to find other innovative ways of uh, trying to bridge the gap or deal with the shortfalls in revenue targets. We've been hearing from experts. What are they suggesting? Okay, good. So, um, you know, uh, over the course of different financial years or fiscal years, there's always a problem between our revenue and our expenditure in the sense that our expenditure seems to exceed our revenue and as such there are ways we have to look for more revenue to meet this expenditure. And so in this discussion about the increase or possible increase, right now we know that they are saying that no, it's not going to go up again to 21.5%. Some economists such as Peter Corte were you know, uh, advancing arguments for an increase in this or in taxes in general. But sometimes there's this argument where some say we should broaden the tax base. And Professor Peter Korte, being a fine economist, University of Ghana, is one of the proponents of expanding this tax net. You know, there's deepening versus broadening. Deepening mm. will mean increasing existing rates. Broadening means spreading the base. And you know, we have a very large number of taxpayers, but it seems just a few of us are paying this tax. So they want to look for other ways. And one good way is the informal sector, where they hold a potential to raise revenue. But it seems there are some structural oddities that prevent them from falling into the tax net. So some of these economists, these experts, are saying that let's broaden this tax base. Let's not fix it on the few people that we're already taxing. Mm. Then you and I become burdened. We go and buy something that's if this VAT was supposed to go up, we go and buy something from a shop, it becomes more expensive, it feeds into inflation, and then the whole economic growth that we're looking for, the positive economic growth, spirals out of gear. So these are some of the arguments that some are raising. Mm. It, it's interesting when you talk about taxes, because early this year we saw the GRA run some campaigns, and they are still doing that. I've seen a couple of posters around, and there was this issue with the tin and exactly. all that. Do we have any statistics so far telling us what uh, the GRA has been able to accrue or if they, whatever progress they are making in this particular endeavor that they are embarking okay. on? Good question. So the GRA falls under the Ministry of Finance. Uh, the Ministry of Finance has purview over the Ghana Revenue Authority. So if you're looking for fiscal data, and by fiscal data, I mean data on expenditure and revenue, you go to the Ministry of Finance website, mofep.gov.gh. I just did that just before I came on there, and it was interesting to know that data is only available for this year, that's the 2018 fiscal year, from January to February. March, April, May, no data. Uh, as to why the data is not available, Philip cannot say, mm. you cannot say. But this data should be made available so that as citizens we can make informed decisions, informed criticisms of our government. Because January to February is not, will not give a clear picture or a clear indication as to where we stand today. Mm. So in terms of very current data i cannot give you because the ministry of finance website as i checked just this morning before i came on here was only up to january to february mm. interesting uh, and i must say that in an interview with peace fm deputy finance minister quick yeah. indicated that that we're going to see some tax increment even though it may not uh, be directly under vat and and he uh, raised the argument about trying to raise enough money 
We know, for example, that the National Health Insurance Scheme owes some 1.2 billion to partner clinics and health facilities. We also know uh, the government is going to spend more on, on the free senior high school uh, program. It's, it's interesting to note all these figures and how they may be contributing to the, to the stretch, if there is anything to say uh, for government. What are we expecting tomorrow? Any hints, any leads? Okay, so with regards to hints and leads, we cannot say it till uh, the finance minister, Kino Freyat, has spoken. But let me give you some perspective. If you look at the budgets over the years, and let me go back as far back as 2012, and this was even in the 2017 budget, the finance minister had a portion where he explained certain things. And let me give it to you. So if you look at government's expenditure over the years, they have been on three main items, compensation of uh, public sector workers, our interest payments, and then grants to other government units. These three, and even the president uh, alluded to this in his 2017 State of the Nation address, where he said 99.6% of our revenue are consumed or is consumed by these three line items. Mm. Now, this is a government that wants to uh, introduce Ghana Beyond Aid, where we are moving from grants, borrowing, to funding from domestic revenue. If we are going to do this, then there have to be innovative ways of expanding our revenue. Like I mentioned earlier on, we're opening the informal sector. But some of these things take medium to long term. It's not going to be a quick fix. It's going to take some time for it to go. So some economists are arguing that we should check our expenditure side of our budgets. These things that seem to consume. And with regards to something like statutory payments, the GETS fund and stuff like that, governments last year passed their earmarked, earmarked capping funds and realignments bill. That sort, that sort to cap revenue at 25% so that it will shift and give them some breathing room. With regards to interest payments, they also did uh, what we call uh, reprofiling of our debt. So they're extending the tenor of our debt into long-term uh, or into long-term structures so that it shifts away the burden of having to pay short-term. That gives you a lot of pressure. When your money comes, then you have to quickly have to service your debts. So some of these things were introduced to more or less lessen the burden. But unfortunately, this, we still seem to be having the same problems where chunks of revenue are going to these items mm. and uh, going for it, they'll have to look at the expenditure side also as well as the revenue side. Interesting. It's interesting you mention wages because we've seen some recent exercises by the Auditor Very General good, yeah. and uh, the Special Prosecutor trying to clean up the system. We saw something similar last year where teachers, most teachers were affected with uh, trying to get on the biometric data. I mean, you, you study the sector. Do we seem to be making progress in that regard of trying to clean up the system so we block uh, the, the revenue leakages? Okay, I think so. The efforts of uh, authorities such as the Controlling uh, Accountant General's Department, Auditor General, are commendable, but they would require some vigilance because in doing this, you would realize that you free up a lot of space, a lot of revenue. Just, just on one, po one point, Imani, Africa, think tank, they last week came out with some findings on the 2017 to 2018 budgets. And one of the problems they identified was this wage bill. And if, if I'm right, the data was that 75% of public sector workers, that's about 500,000, are considered as semi-skilled and unskilled. And they are the ones taking the chunk of these wages and compensation. So going forward, some are saying that we should start matching pay to productivity so that it's not just coming to work and getting your salary and making sure that it's fixed. Because these are recurrent expenditures. When I say recurrent, they are always happening. They are always happening. And now we want to see a situation where we shift expenditure to capital expenditure, what we call CAPEX. That's the tangibles, the roads and stuff that we see. Because some of these projects are funded from loans and it's all going back to affect our debt and it continues on and on. So it's like a cyclical thing. Mm. Well, uh, Philip, before I let you go, one of the things that uh, government has had to deal with quite recently is the CD uh, depreciation. Uh, we're expecting the, the min finance minister to dwell more on that, uh, talk about expectations for tomorrow's budget presentation. Okay, so very good. Um, we've seen the CD, let me use the word dancing a bit. We've seen some modest recovery, um, but the issues of CD dollar for more or less under the Bank of Ghana's purview. They are the ones in charge of
currency mm. supplies and mm. control in an economy. Mm. If you go to other jurisdictions, the European Central Bank does the same thing, the Federal Reserve and does the same thing. So it's more under Bank of Ghana's purview. They are supposed to come out. And you know they are meeting from today to Friday, Monetary Policy Committee meetings. Next week, Monday, they will come out with mm. their policy rate announcement. So I think we should also gauge that space and see what exactly the Bank of Ghana comes out with when mm. it comes to the CD. Uh, dollar but, but, but in previous budget reasons, we've had we've had some reference to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so are we are we expecting you know the minister to touch on that and and some other issues? Okay, yes, uh, we should expect it. Uh, I always say we should be guiding these things because we don't want to make pronouncements that will not come to pass. Mm. So we should just watch the space and see what it is because those have targets and all these depreciation issues feed into their targets. So inflation, for example, they are projected end of year inflation of eight point nine percent. As of June, we are 10%. We have more or less shot the target by a bit. So the depreciation of the city feeds into all these things. So yes, the minister may touch on them as to how that part of the economy, that's the city dollar uh, relationship, will affect other parts of the economy and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Philip Nyanfuri yes. is with our Joy Business Desk, helping us understand uh, what to expect tomorrow as the Finance Minister presents his mid-year budget review. But the news now is there will be no VAT, even though Deputy Finance Minister has said that there will be some tax incrementing other sectors.